we zijn in Monaco. Monaco is ook mij bekend. Dat is uh, een van de duurste plaatsen in de wereld. En prijzen gaan hier, de topprijzen gaan, ik denk rond de 100.000 de vierkante meter. Ik ben uitgenodigd door jongens die mij gecontacteerd hebben, een jong team. Uh, die kijken een beetje op naar mij van bepaalde succesvolle deals die ik gedaan heb. Die hebben gevraagd om hen te bezoeken om naar het onderzoek te kijken en mogelijk een samenwerking te starten. Merci. Tu veux un café? Je veux bien, s'il te plaît. So my name is Benoit Brizzy. Uh, and I'm going also to introduce my brother, Maxim Brizzi. Maxim Brizzi. So I'm his brother. <laughs> Twin brother, in fact. <laughs> yeah. So we are half French and uh, half Italian. We are born in Monaco, but um, to be Monegasque, it's really a nationality. We have our resident card of Monaco, because we actually live in Monaco, but we are not Monegasque. Yes, it's difficult for sometimes for strangers to understand, understand the difference between uh, the two situations, and there is a, a real, real difference. Uh. <laughs> I'm Clement Catalano. I am 24 years old, and uh, now we are at my home in Monaco, in Fontvieille. I used to live in Place d'Armes, which is uh, in the center of Monaco. And when we became Monégasque, uh, we just moved in Fontvieille because it's uh, Monégasque district. I was born Italian and French. And uh, then after, because of my dad and because of my family, we became all the family Monégasque. You ask to the, to the state, the nationality, and when they, I don't know, they think that you are enough Monégasque to become it, you become Monégasque. It's not something that you have to do. It's when you live from uh, two or three generations in Monaco. My grandfather was in Monaco. My grand-grandfather was in Monaco. So they said that we were enough, I don't know how to say, old in Monaco to, to become Monégasque. So I've met Maxime and Benoit at the maternelle. Maternelle is uh, when you are four years old. And then we did all, the, all our schools together, like uh, the Ecole de la Condamine. Then we did different universities. I stayed in Monaco, Benoit went to Nice, and also Maxime. So I went to the Univers International University of Monaco, and I studied a Bachelor in Business and Administration. And then I began directly the real estate agency with Maxime and Benoit. Why I did choose real estate? Because when you're a Monegasque in Monaco, it's easier to open that kind of business because it's a private license that the government gives you. And also, it would be too bad to not be in the real estate market when you are living in Monaco, as it is the, the most expensive market in the world. Monaco is heel interessant om, om verschillende mogelijkheden. Men kan eerst enerzijds komen wonen op belasting, technische reden. Maar anderzijds, zoals ik momenteel zie na de corona, is Monaco heel goed van investeren. Het is een heel stabiele markt. Het geeft een heel niet zo groot rendement. Men haalt hier een rendement van een 2%. Maar het is toch een oplei op de markt dat heel omhoog gaat. Dus ik denk dat die combinatie eh, is het wel, ja, is het een zeer goede markt. Hallo, Jens. Hallo, hoe Yes, thank you for. Uh... You take the coffee, that's the old uh, Monaco, eh? Old Ville, eh? Yeah, yeah. that's Monaco Ville. Uh, here you have the Rocher and the Palace, okay. where the prince is living. The agency, how old is the agency? One year old. In yeah. Spanish? Yeah, we just created it uh, in September. I'm the director, and Bruno and uh, You start like for me. students, eh? You, you yeah. know each other from... And he was uh, at the school, eh, correct? Exactly, we were the three of us doing our studies. Maxim was doing uh, real estate studies. Uh, I was studying finance. And Clément also. Uh, Clément was studying directly in Monaco. Okay. 
So in Monaco, it exists two systems of uh, education. There is the, um, the, um, the, public the, one. the public one and the private one. The public one is based on the French system and the private one in Monaco is more on an American system. So the biggest difference between the, the two, first of all, uh, is that the, um, the, the private system and the American one is really uh, more for uh, strangers. And really, the local uh, local person, I don't know anybody that was in the in this international school. So you can really yeah. feel also the difference here. What's the difference how your agency works compared to other? I think we have um, a philosophy a bit different uh, from the others because uh, we are first of all very young, uh, and then we have. Um, strategies really different. Benoit can explain you this. Also, um, we have a network very local. We know we were born here, raised here. Clément is, uh, is Monégasque. This is uh, a little bit what we are using in our dynamism. It's this, um, this all, the, all what we know, and only residents born here can know all that about uh, about Monaco. Okay. That's what we wanted to start in Monaco, to have like a real dynamic thing, a real dynamic way of working the, the real estate in doing like more videos, more marketing. We like to use our, our youngness and our dynamism in this sector and in this business. This is our office. It's where we all, we work uh, most, of, uh, most of the day. We do our meetings also here with clients. Our style is a little bit different from what is used to do in a real estate uh, business. We are using social medias and uh, marketing uh, a little bit uh, different from the others. I'm not saying we are trying something um, really different and uh, it's not an innovation because it's already the case in other, uh, other cities. For Monaco, let's say yes, it's quite new. First of all, it was a, they were a bit shocked of the way we, we were doing things. Monaco is a bit archaic in the real estate uh, business. We are trying to um, attract the new generation that is coming to, to Monaco. We have to adapt to, uh, to, their, uh, to their needs and uh, I think it's the, their future needs. Enerzijds hebben ze ook aangehaald dat ze op een andere manier werken. Het, het makelaarsgebeur en dan de traditionele makelaar. We ook realiseren dat de makelaars in Monaco, die doen helemaal niets op social media. Die doen dat niet. Uh, er zijn sommige makelaars zelf die geen website hebben. Dat gaat mond tot mond. Dus zij hebben een, zitten te vluchten met Amerikaanse toestanden. Dat proberen zij te activeren op social media. Ze hebben gewerkt met billboards in Monaco. Wat toch een beetje uit de box te denken. Mijn cliënteel die zullen niet zo snel aantreffen op social media toestanden. Maar zij bewandelen nieuwe wegen. So actually, are you are the youngest people in real estate, not in Monaco? No? So the youngest agency, yeah. The youngest agency. Uh, yeah. There are many brokers that have our age, but we also are... Also Monacas, but you are Monacas, okay? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because uh, only Monacas can do that. Okay. Type of business. So that is, is that how they stopped the, the authorization? Yeah, yeah, they did stop the authorization. Uh, only a monogas one can have the authorization and the license and can begin to do broker in real estate. Yes, you need to understand that in Monaco there was some um, some some business that are all under law. So to create another one, you need to have, you need to be a Monégasque. So you need to have the, the passport of Monaco. It's like the, like the state is preserving a little bit some businesses for the Monégasque only. So the three of us, we, we wanted to create something together. First of all, it was not a real estate agency. And uh, with the years, we wanted to experience this together as there was really an opportunity as Monaco is like, a, really known also for the price per square meter here. Monaco is, is for my clientele, heeft een andere positie dan Zwitserland. Met Zwitserland daar zijn de rijkeren, die worden daar niet zo graag gezien. Men leeft allemaal onder de radar. In Monaco is alles een beetje meer op publiek. Hier wordt men graag gezien. We hebben hier enkele deals gedaan, maar dat waren, uh, dat waren maar enkelen.
Dus laten we zeggen, dat is misschien eentje of twee op jaarbasis. Wat in mijn gebeuren eigenlijk niet zoveel is. Maar de wereld verandert en wij kijken nu al, zijn we toch aan het kijken voor eh, ook Belgen. Er wonen 1100 Belgen hier. Dus we zijn heel die markt van open trekken. En daarom zal ik jullie ook meenemen naar Monaco om te laten zien. En ja, ook voor de kijkers. Why now? You, co- you contact me in that time. What's the reason? I think there is a, a huge curiosity around Monaco. And I'm sure you know that. And what we wanted to create is that uh, we would like to create a bridge, in fact, and to explain to people how it works in Monaco, because it's really a unique place. Uh, we would like to communicate more about uh, living in Monaco, uh, what are the steps to take the residents here? Because in fact, it's not, uh, it's not a difficult way. It's quite simple, and we would like to communicate a little bit more about that. Okay, so you actually you want to build a bridge to me, and then we can see that we expire, you, you have more clients. Exactly, exactly. Right. Next episode, Ines meets Piet Stockmans a craftsman in porcelain who made the porcelain tableware for Alain Ducasse in Monaco. I see a board as a product where there is place is to be creative to be for the chef. Ines meets with Benoit to view one of their properties. What are the sales prices? This one is at 4 million. And Ines wants to know why he should do business with Benoit, Maxime and Clément. So you want to take all the rumors away? Mm-hmm. That's it. That's yeah. what we wanted to do.